be happier. But uh, yeah, you know, I actually I thought about this recently that the the digital world has united us all across so many professions that are you can keep going with this this as well. What I'm about to say, but but like so obviously musicians, everyone's been talking about streaming services and how streaming services are killing um, musicians' income, and there is a truth to that. Like obviously, you know, I mean, if you just look at the the statistics, you could get hundreds of thousands of plays on a service like Spotify and it will amount to tens of dollars. I mean, it doesn't really make, it doesn't make any sense. People's minds are usually boggled when they kind of think of the, the numbers and, you know, it, it looks like such an impossible battle to, to make any money if you're going to through that, through that revenue stream. Obviously musicians have all their revenue streams, um, but similar to journalists, I mean, there's a comparison there uh, in terms of, you know, online media versus print media. I mean, when I was, thinking about going into journalism, the idea that, I mean, newspapers had websites, but it was just an added thing. It wasn't the only thing, you know, uh, right. and, and you see it on all of the biggest platforms. If you go to the Washington Post or New York Times or Guardian, like the first things that are popping up, are like subscribe digitally, please, you know, basically begging people to like pay for a digital subscription because they can see the revenue streams changing too between print and digital. Like the digital world is, it affects all of us, you know, and, and every industry is trying to figure out how to reckon with that, I think. Well, you know, I write, and so certainly the publishing industry has changed dramatically um, mm. because, well, first of all, I, I admit I live in rural Newfoundland. I can't go and grab the bestseller that comes out that day, and if I want to read Stephen King's newest book, I download it. I grab it from, and I probably at this point would be doing that even if I could go to chapters and grab it the day it comes out because I got to have it that day. Um, you know, I do that. I get my library books quite often um, through uh, Libby is the, the library because I could go and get, you know, the librarian to get the book come in and they'll say, well, it's on hold and then I got to wait. And, you know, so I can just go on there and get the digital copy and read it. And uh, it's so much easier, faster. Now I'd still buy books. I just uh, curate my collection a little better. Uh, if mm -hmm. it's a friend's book or someone I really want to want to have their book, I buy the book. I buy the actual physical book. And if I'm in a place where I can buy it directly from the writer, I buy the book from the writer, especially when I'm out, of, you know, we're doing tours and stuff now. And I, I've bought books. I don't make any money because I just spend it all in books. But um, <laughs> mostly, though, my regular reading is, is all digital. And it's fine because I know authors who have, seen they saw the way that things were going who jumped on that who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars selling digital books mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they're not even concerned if they have a paperback anymore because their main source of especially in the genre writing you know the science fiction and the, the spec fiction and the romance and all of that um, people are buying them digitally and reading them digitally and authors are selling them so absolutely and the ones who got in there early and saw the way things were going, they're the ones that have had certainly the most, a little bit later on for me. Now, speaking of books, I do want to tell you, I've told you this before, but one of your songs pretty much inspired the character of one of my books that is not published oh. yet, the song That's Calendar, so cool. which is my favorite song. I love that song. It's just, uh, it's one of my favorites all time, but it's my, definitely my favorite of yours. Um, cool. And that book, I'll just let you know right now, <laughs> let the world know right now, it is coming out in 2019. I'm in discussion with a publisher right now, and it will be released in 2019. Oh, so, congratulations. That's yeah. so cool. What's the name of the book? Can you tell us I can't tell, tell you. Yet, I can't okay. tell you. Okay. And the reason I can't tell yeah. you is because it had a working title, and we right. haven't decided on its final name. Oh, fair so enough. So I really can't tell you because I don't know. <laughs> it's not one of those, you know, if I tell you I have to kill you. It's one of those I can't tell right, you. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I've been calling it uh, Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The book that can't be named. But uh, we'll we'll find a good name for it, and uh, it'll come out next year. So hopefully by late oh, spring. I can't wait but, to read it. You know. Yeah, so I think when you do, I think I'll make sure you get a copy. I think when you read it, you will see how the song inspired the character i think you'll i was going to together. say yeah like I, I i sort of would like to read it and figure it out myself but i'm i'm certainly curious about 
I'm curious about that process, you know, how how a song inspired a character that way, you know? Yeah. It was it was it was a character that was in my mind. Like I knew I kind of knew okay. who she was. Like I kind of had this character in mind, but I didn't know enough about her. It was sort of one of these things. So I started out to draft the book and that song came on cuz I had music going and I went, "Oh." And I started writing and it just started fl- so I put the song on repeat. I just put it on repeat and I just kept going and I drafted the book over, you know, a few weeks and I must have listened to that song. I, I wore out the CD, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that whole section of the CD because I would get into it. So sometimes I would let it go two or three songs before I realized, oh, I got to go back to my song. And um, so that whole section of the CD got ch- damaged. And so now I have you downloaded on Spotify. But, oh my God. <laughs> So yeah, you're getting like you know yeah uh, pennies every time I play it. But anyway, um, or every thousand online, million times out. I play it. Yeah, if yeah. Calendar is the most listened to song. I'll know who who's the culprit. Yeah, you know who it is. <laughs> I I listened to it this morning. I mean, I put your music on because oh, I was cool. going to be talking to you. So I uh, I threw it on this morning and and listened to it. And I just I still go. Oh, I just love this song. I just love the song. I really do. My other favorite <laughs> song that you wrote is the one you wrote as a tribute to Ron Hines. And oh, yeah. I, I just feel like you just, there was a moment when everybody was sort of sitting there going, oh, crap. You know what I mean? Like, he's gone. Like, you, you knew it was coming, mm-hmm. but, and I, and the last time I saw Ron was at Citadel House. He played one of his last shows, and I talked to him. And, I mean, I didn't know him except as a fan, but I talked to him, and I, he said, promise you I'm coming back, he said. And, of course, he didn't. So then mm-hmm. I was, you know, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then he was gone. So, and it, there was this moment, and it seems like that song just took that moment and just, mm. you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> For that. Was, that was beautiful, and it's still one of my favorite songs. I still love it. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... It was just, it, it truly was a, a moment for me, obviously, as well, you know, in terms of of, of just, I, I didn't, you, you don't set out to write a song like that, you know, it, it doesn't, right. you know, I, I took the guitar on off the wall and I started playing it while I was thinking about it, but I do that in any way, just to, you know, playing music has always been one of the ways that I process things and that, you know, it's, it, you know, has yielded songs over the years, but it's certainly not, uh, you don't always just sit down to an instrument with purpose. You know, it's, it's a way of, of just thinking about stuff as well. And in that case, I mean, uh, and, and you would never, I don't think take on the, like trying to write something like that in that moment. It would just, it just all felt too huge to me. You know, the, the enormity of not only his contribution, but that character in our, in our kind of, you know, little Newfoundland culture, like Ron was yeah. such a big personality. And so, you know, um, for me, I mean, the thing that appealed to me right away about the song, like that thing that when I, you know, suddenly kind of, you know, had this thing in front of me was just that it, it, it felt like it tried to tackle one part of, of Ron's legacy, which is the part that I think is, you know, I mean, it's the songs, you know, it's the, yeah. the songs he wrote and, and the craft that, that he exhibited in writing them. Because I think that that part for me is the part that I've heard talk about the least about Ron in some ways. I mean, you always hear everyone say he was a great songwriter, but never why he was a great songwriter, you know, like beyond saying, okay, he told, he told our stories. Okay. That's cool. But there's lots of people who do that. And I think that, that it was, you know, the craft that he exhibited, you know, the detail, the attention to detail. And I had that experience on a personal level when I wrote a song with him 10 years ago, that he was that person who, you know, he was just such a really great editor. He would think about all those extraneous words and say, why are we singing those? It gets in the way of the melody, it gets in the way of the story, it clouds the thing. Like, just those little tiny details all add up to that X factor of why a person likes a song. Because obviously no listener should ever be actively thinking about that when they hear a song. They want to be transported away. Right. Um, but 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 that thing is part of what transports them away. You know, it's it's like the whole, you know being the colorist in a movie, you know, if you did a good job, nobody notices. They're just transported by it. No one is, you know, unless you're a film buff is sitting back going, I love the palette of colors in this scene where two people are having an argument. You, you should be completely engaged in the argument and like emotionally connected to that, you know? So, so the craft that he exhibited aside from obviously writing our stories and all those things that, that we all know, I just think that craft was so much about what made him, 
you know, left, leaving all those great songs behind, you know? So I don't know. I feel like all that was sort of somewhere in the, I wasn't thinking about it actively, but I was feeling it, I guess, somewhere in the back of my head that that was, that was all the true legacy that, that Ron was kind of leaving us behind is that, you know, that tr- just trying to write the best song we can, you know? Yeah, he was he was <laughs> ridiculously good at writing a song like, th- and and they were so uh, su- succinct and and concise. Like you you just got it. It it almost made it sound like it felt like okay, it was simple, but you know it wasn't. It was like you said, edited uh, to that point and considered every uh, bit and. Because and that's that would be what made him good. Your first, you know, first drafts, right, are not mm-hmm. great. It's mm-hmm. what you do after the, and the same with any kind of writing, I guess. I mean, nothing. I mean, writing for me, if I didn't have a good editor, I forget it. I can't find the pieces the same. And editors help you shine it up and polish it, and like you said, take out the extra and so that people can just read and just, yeah. you know. Well, it's that old quote, uh, write drunk, edit sober, you know. And exactly. I, mean, I think, I, I mean, some writers, I guess, or think of that literally, but, uh, <laughs> but man, you know, generally, you know, metaphor, it's it's great metaphor, you know, because you, you sort of, and, and that's always the scariest art too. I think there's a total art to, to all the editors out there, or the song crafters, all those people, there's, the art is there. You, it's the same in uh, making records as well. Like the mix engineer, the mastering engineer, uh, definitely fall in that same sort of category because they're the next stages that everything passes through before it gets to the final thing. And and the art of that is maintaining whatever kernel of greatness there was in the original while sanding all the edges to make it as good as it can be without sanding out the that core original thing. I mean, that's, as you know, Anyone who's ever gone through the creative process knows that's the art. You know, how do you cook it exactly right? You don't want it undercooked, but you certainly don't want it overcooked either. So it's uh, it's a challenge that never gets easier. I think that's what's compelling about it is that it's never like you do it for 30 years and then you figure it out. And then every time it's easy. I don't think anyone ever does. Anyone I've ever heard talk about creativity uh, has always you know, said that it's it's a moving target forever. And that's part of the frustration and part of the elation of it. And the first, the first, the a frustration for me is trying to get new people to share their stuff because, and they don't have to share it with the world. They can share it with just one person or two people. And then the, the, I don't, I don't like the word criticism, the feedback that they get, they're mm-hmm. afraid of it. And right. they get their backs up and they say, well, this is my work and this is how I do it. And, Sometimes I say, you got you to gotta go into this with a lot of humility and say, you know what? I've done my best with it. Here it is. Give me some feedback. That doesn't mean I'm going to let go of the process and use every suggestion that's made or it, it's a collaboration and you go back and forth until, you know, and, you know, there's things that I will fight for two words if I think that they make <laughs> the difference in that paragraph. And there's times when I'll say, yeah, I like the name of the book, you know? Um, right. I just, I knew when I submitted it that I was already open to changing the name of that book because I wasn't custodial over it. I didn't feel like it was that relevant to the overall project. And, uh, but I know that when the publisher mentioned it, they kind of softened things up because they didn't know I was going to quite take it because I'm sure they've dealt with people where that would just be the complete deal breaker. So... <laughs> You know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you. Well, have I think to... I think. Go I was ahead. just gonna say I think I think that uh, uh, that's such an interesting topic. Like you're saying, like the idea of accepting criticism and how it works, because it's a careful balance on both sides. You know, uh, like producing records for artists, um, it's the same thing. You're constantly looking at a song and and being an editor in one way or another. And I've really taken to saying, um, I've really taken to kind of trying to boil it down most times to um, saying, if you can give me a good reason why you want to do a certain thing or why my idea is a bad idea, I'll almost 100% of the time drop it. Because I'm aware that uh, you know, really great editors know exactly why they're asking for what they're asking. I think a lot of people don't necessarily know the difference between a, a, a valid criticism and just opinion, right? And there is a balance there, and I've recognized that in myself. So I think that 
sometimes those questions can just lead to the best things. You know, if you can, if you have a good reason why you're doing a certain thing and you've really thought about it, then that probably adds a depth to it. If you haven't thought about that, I mean, I know there's stuff in my songs over the years that someone has gone, why did you phrase it this way? And I've kind of gone, I don't know. (laughs) 